Okay, so today I want to talk about the Samsung DLP TV I have here in the shop. This is very similar to the problem I had with my own Mitsubishi DLP TV. Uh, and if you look on the far left hand side of the picture, you'll notice a shadow. Uh, this one is only about three quarters of an inch to an inch wide, but uh, it's still troublesome enough that the customer wanted to bring this in to get it repaired. So I thought I'd talk about adjusting the light path on this one. Uh, the model on this Samsung DLP TV happens to be an HLT5087. Uh, this is an LED TV. It does not use a uh, UHP ultra high pressure mercury lamp like the other sets do. Most of them use just a, uh, a lamp and a balance to drive it. This actually has three individual red, green, and blue LEDs that they pulse on and off. Uh, to get the color in the picture, much like having a color wheel, other than it does not have a color wheel, they just digitally turn the LEDs on and off as necessary to correspond with the micro mirrors on the DLP chip to make the picture. So, it's going to talk about getting this into the service mode to begin with. Okay, so to get into the service mode on this one, first make sure that you have the TV off. So I'm going to shut it off. And now using uh, a Samsung remote, I happen to have this one here, use the keys mute, the number one, the number eight, the number two, and then the power button on the remote to turn the TV back on. You should see the LEDs flashing on the front of the TV. Although I don't know if you can see it in when I have the camera positioned or not. But the set, the set should start and then you'll get uh, this menu coming up here. And in uh, DDP 3021, you should find the test pattern, and this is the what they call the DDP test pattern. That's what actually drives the DLP chip. And so there are several different patterns you can look at here. The white one is always the easiest to use. And as you can see on the far left-hand side of the picture that there is a shadow. So I want to talk about um, adjusting that. One thing to look for on these LED TVs is they use a radiator assembly heat sink to cool the three LEDs and uh, the, the fins of the heat sink are spaced very close together and they do get plugged up with dust and I'll show you that here in just a second. So uh, I'm going to need to uh, pull the light engine partially out of the TV to get to the adjustment and um, I'll show you what's going on there. So just a couple things to check on these LED TVs when you have the back off. Uh, this power supply is over here on the right hand side of the rear of the TV. This is the LED power supply, and I've had problems with these capacitors being bulged. Uh, they'll cause a no start uh, scenario. Uh, the other thing to look for is this main input filter capacitor, and if it is bulged, then that tells me that you've got problems on the main power supply. Probably got a bad capacitor over there as well. Uh, there are two large uh, capacitors, either 470 microfarads or 680 microfarads at 200 volts. And if one of those uh, were to go bad on the main power supply, it'll cause this second capacitor over here to bulge as well. Uh, these normally just bulge from age. These all appear to be very good in this TV. There's none of them that are bulged whatsoever. They look good. Uh, but I have seen those. And most of these are always in parallel with each other. Uh, there was one version that actually had a 12 and a 16 volt output. So it had one extra capacitor. I believe this one only has the 16 volt output. Uh, so nevertheless, uh, let me show you the uh, uh, the cooling assembly, which is housed right in here. There's actually three heat sinks inside here. See if I can turn it where you can actually see. There's uh, the radiator assembly. Uh, this one's for the blue right here. And what I'm going to do is position the camera and shine a light through it so you can see the dust that's gotten clogged up in there. So kind of hard to see on the camera, but uh, you can see little white specks as I bring the light to and from the cooling assembly. Um, that's the only really place that the air is passing through here. It's kind of hard to see how much dust is actually embedded in there, but there is a considerable amount. The best thing to do, uh, like I have my shot vac that I use, I have it set up just as a blower. It does a very good job. Just blow some air through there and get that dust out of there. You'll be amazed at how much comes out. So I'm going to go ahead and do that right now. And unfortunately, it's going to be kind of hard to see because of the angle the sun is shining in here right now.
Hopefully you could see a little bit of how much dust came out of there. It was really packed in there. Okay, so once again, here's the same view as I put my light up to it. You can see all the little paths are perfectly clear. If you look hard, you can even see the fan down in the other end here, right here. As I turn it, you can see it turn, see the light shadow. Anyhow, let's talk about removing the light engine and getting it in a position where you can bring it up in the service mode and adjust. So to do this, I'm going to start by removing the two screws that hold in the LED power supply as well as the two screws that hold in the optical block. So then I'm going to go ahead and just disconnect this one uh, connector. That's the power supply to the LEDs. This ground cable can be removed. This is the 300 and, uh, 320 volt from the main power supply. Once that's done, the uh, LED power supply can be just taken out completely and set aside. The next thing I'm going to do is remove the optical block completely from the TV. This is done by just simply unclipping the LVDS cable. It's done by just squeezing the two tabs and gently pulling. There's one cable on this model that connects from the main board power supply unit to the DMD board. And then the next thing, it's got a little convenient handle, just grab into the handle, pull it back, watch carefully. Sometimes the wires to the ballast get caught over here on the other side. I don't know if you can see that on the camera or not. Make sure that these cables we previously unplugged don't get caught out here. They need to kind of be pushed back over the top of the engine. And then the whole engine can be taken out of the TV. Once the engine's out of the TV, go ahead and remove the two screws that hold the lens cover in place. Once those are out, the lens cover can be completely taken off and moved out of the way. I'm just going to turn this sideways so you can have a look down in here, but what we're going to be adjusting on this model are these two screws right here. And this adjusts the angle of the mirror uh, that reflects on the DLP chip. And so next we're going to connect the chassis back up so we can operate this out of the set so I can project this up onto the ceiling and adjust it while it's out of the TV. So here's the back of the TV. I've got everything reconnected. The LVDS cable is reconnected. I have reconnected the uh, power cable uh, from the main board to the DMD board as well as I've got the power supply connected over here to the LED power supply and I do have the 16 volt supply connected uh, to the engine. Uh, so the next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and fire the setup. Now just remember the remote control sensor is now in the front of the TV and the engine's in the back. So I'm going to point the remote at the front. I'm going to hit mute, one, eight, two, power. The unit should power up. I should see some light. There we go. I can actually see some snow projected on the back of the TV right here. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off the shop lights, point the camera up at the ceiling. Okay, I've got it pointed up on the ceiling, so it's kind of hard to see, but I'm going to go down into the DDP. I'm going to bring up that same test pattern again. Get it up onto the white screen. And next I'm going to turn those adjustment screws until it just covers the screen. There's two adjustment screws. One's for the bottom. You can see I just brought the bottom in there. If you turn it too far then it'll affect the top of the picture. You want to find a happy medium between the two of them. The other adjustment screw is right and left. And it's kind of hard to see the left side of the picture on this one. So I'm just going to adjust it until it clears the whole screen. I'm going to give it about a half a turn farther and then I'm going to go ahead and clean the lens and put it back in. Now a quick note before I go ahead and show you what's going on. Somebody mentioned after I, uh, after I posted my light tunnel repair on my Mitsubishi TV, they mentioned they had tried the repair on it and their screen was tilted. The picture was tilted after they got it back together. And I wanted to show you the tilt adjustment real quick on this model. 
Uh, actually, underneath the light engine, it's hard to see, but you can see there's a screw here and a screw right here. And what that does is it actually allows you to tighten one half or the other half independently and see how it tilts this just slightly. So what you do is you find out if your picture's tilted and then you obviously tighten both of these screws up. If it's tilted, back them off a little bit, loosen one of these, which will push the engine out just a little bit, retighten the screw, see if you got your tilt in the direction you needed. If not, tighten this one back up, loosen this one, retighten the two main mounting screws and then you can adjust your picture tilt that way. I'll show you how to access the pattern that puts the lines on the screen so you can tell if it's tilted as well. Okay, so I've got my engine back in the set. The power supply is all ready to go. I'm gonna bring it up in the service menu again. Mute 182 power with the set off. And real quick, I'll just go into the DDP option we'll bring up that test pattern again let you look at the screen bring up the white pattern hard to see on this camera because of how close it is but it looks like it's got a hot spot in the middle of the picture but it it does not if you get back a few feet uh, it's not there and, and as you can see it's fully filled out all the way around and so uh, to go into the horizontal vertical position just choose the very top mode here HV position it says uh, horizontal 60 vertical 32 just either press enter or move to the right or the left and as you can see there's little uh, bars all over the screen and those indicate the amount of overscan on this particular one right now I can see more on the right hand side than I can on the left hand side so I'm going to move the picture a little bit to the right as well as you can move the picture up and down hopefully you can see that on the video as I move it up and down and so I'm just going to use this red line on the very top of the picture as reference hopefully you can see that one actually you know what I think I'll use the bottom probably be easier to see on the video and let's use the uh, let's use the green line so as you can see on this one the green line is visible on the right hand side but it's not visible on the left and so I just slightly moved the engine and now it looks like it's up even higher so I moved it the wrong direction so I'll move it the other way and that looks pretty good now I can see the green line completely on the right and the left it does disappear slightly in the center but there's really no way that you can get around that so the deal is just try to find a balance between the top and the bottom of the picture and get the lines as straight and as centered as you possibly can. Uh, there's not a lot of geometry adjustments on these sets as compared to like the Mitsubishi TVs. You can actually adjust the the angle and the tilt of the light engine and you can get the sides perfectly straight and that eliminates any trapezoidal uh, picture that you might have on the screen. So let's go ahead and get a picture on this one and see how it looks. And there's the set all back together. It looks great. No shadows in the picture. Uh, the picture on these sets is really sharp, especially with the LED sets. They have a really good color depth, uh, which means the reds are very deep red, the blues are a deep blue, the greens are a deep green. Uh, colors like that you just can't get on a plasma or a LED or LCD TV. Uh, you just can't get that rendering. It's almost like going to the movie theater and watching the, uh, the signal there. Uh, oh, looks like we lost the signal. Oh, there it's back. Anyhow, I just wanted to uh, thank you once again for your views, your support, your comments. Try to answer as many as I possibly can. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter once again, NorCal715. Everybody have a great day. With your help, we can keep these things out of the recycle bin and out of the landfill. Everybody have a great day. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.